This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Uh, yeah, the Game Fury thing where every time it was ellipses, they just vomited. That that actually worked very well. Okay. All right. Again, pay attention to the Yuri sticker. If, if it happens, it'll be crazy. Melancholy. All right. Ambient. Graveyard. Imagination. Eternity. Uh, that, that would be a Natsuki word. Let's go. Tenacious. Infallible. Um, explode. A tone, determination, whirlwind, unrestrained, infinite, heaven sent, rain cloud. Nope, darn it, that was the wrong one. After image, unrequited, frightening, uncontrollable, incongruent. Okay, didn't happen. There's a really tiny chance. That if you pick a word that Yuri likes during Act 2, Yuri's sticker, instead of doing the happy jump up and down, will do something... ...slightly different. And it is disturbing. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here for the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Artie. Ah, uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression. But the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs out in the air a little bit. Oh! <laughs> I'll never forget it happen. <laughs> Yuri's face can be missing in this scene, which makes the whole, like, Yuri's expression thing even funnier. <laughs> also kind of horrifying. Uh, um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk. <laughs> Un unsurprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. Oh, no! About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't actually mentally sound. That is true. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. You're... Yuri. I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, I it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided I that there's no way. You. <laughs> That's fitting. I'd already decided there's no way that you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, uh Artie, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person, and I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything's a little bit brighter with you around, and. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. There's another weird thing that can happen here. Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Uh, I was also, I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri's clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... I'll accept your apology anyway, if it makes you help you feel better about it. I'm gonna try to trigger it. Besides, it's kinda nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kinda weird, but I don't hate you either. That's okay, turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah, we knew you were okay. Also, why are we all hanging out in the closet? Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not! <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Okay, I think we've already passed the trigger for it, so... Yeah, Natsuki can do something weird. This isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid. I can't help but worry. 
Why are you looking at me like that? What are you talking about? I, ah, jeez, whatever's on your mind. I don't remember anything bad happening. I'll accept your apology anyways. It's nice to hear you say that. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, we missed it again. It's weird. I want to trigger it. Nope, didn't get it that time either. Actually, it might not be a random thing. I think it is, though. We'll do it one more time. If we don't get it here, then we don't get it. Okay, we don't get it. That's fine. Weird thing can happen. My, like, sh her eyes will be blacked out and she'll get, like, an actual human mouth. Like, blah, 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 and say a bunch of weird words. It's weird. That was not what took you so long. Well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication, so I'm still impressed. Ah, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. But maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Artie. Monica smiles sweetly. Oh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was just hoping I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been pra practicing so much recently. I see. Oh, there's a 25% chance that it happens? Okay, no, so it is random. I want to do it again. There we go! My bull sailcloth blind sight lifeline and unrested activity faultlessly offered. Sclemmer off the nade, careful light I'll accept your apology anyways. I wanted to see that. Okay, we just had to try enough. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Well, you missed Natsuki's mouth do a weird thing. No, not really. I choose not to bring up anything of that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki had already run off into the closet. Uh, Artie, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club! Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay! Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Oh no, she got the crazy eyes again. Uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart j just won't stop pounding for some reason. It's going doki doki. Ah, don't worry about it. If anything, then it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, but I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and then pulls out a, a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. Mm hmm. There's one thing that can make my reading time here any better. It's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Yeah, I, the water fountain scene repeats if you do Yuri's poems. Ah, uh, did, did Yuri leave you again? Ah, uh, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Yeah, okay, now it's time for this scene. Ten minutes pass. Here he said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up. I'm bored just waiting here, so I decide to go look for her. Let's see... The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. 
Yuri? <laughs> What's that noise? I can't. The last logical place I assume. What time is? I'm back. Yep. That happened. Thanks for waiting patiently. Artie, do you like oolong tea? We, you, did you just rewind time to say that I didn't see that? I saw that. I saw those slashes. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. Yo, it's rewind time. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? Hoo-hoo. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will! Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. I've known you for three days. Ah. That's great, Yuri! Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Artie. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Artie, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Ah, uh, why is that? It's a little easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall better than rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture! Posture is the best euphemism. So, that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each one holding half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Oh, we gotta get closer! Yuri sighed us closer until our shoulders are touching. Ye gads, we can't do this until we're married. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but she's being less apprehensive. It's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch your chest. It's very easy to accidentally ch touch that. I mean, meanwhile, Yuri hasn't accidentally hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you understand, Marty. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly like over the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Ah, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. This is a good CG. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I don't have any harder time... Uh, she holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case... Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here! I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. You guys, we can't do that until it's our one-year anniversary. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Artie... Sorry, all you did was put a chocolate in her mouth. How is this... How is how is this weirder than any of the other stuff that's happened? I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't. Artie. Suddenly, na Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Artie. My heart... Um, wh No, we are not getting... We're not getting locked in the closet together. 
My heart won't stop pounding, Artie. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Artie? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Um... Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Yuri, that's too close, and those eyes are creepy as all get out. <sighs> um, thank you for saving me, Monica. It's time to share poems. Thank you, Monica. Who should we share poems with first? Let's share it with Yuri. Definitely. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll go share with Natsuki. For I've been waiting for this. Sorry, Yuri. Rewind time. You rewound time earlier. I can do it, too. Natsuki. <laughs> yeah, just as I thought. Artie, come on! I'm not stupid. I know how much time you've been spending with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than about trying to improve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Why are you even in this club, Artie? Honestly, I thought getting a new member would help everyone get more involved together, not exclude each other even more. This is such a stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today, and I just really don't feel like talking right now. Please go away. Happy Marty, we did Natsuki first. Didn't even get a poem from her. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? You like what you see? Artie, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick it up this so quickly? No, that's that's tomorrow's poem. Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of technique worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Uh, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing that I feel like I'm valued, Artie! Everything you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Artie? I'm not being weird, alright? I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. It's kind of embarrassing. But right now, I want you to read my poem, too. Okay. Uh, I don't like that face. Alright. Wheel. A rotating wheel. Turning on an axle. Grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky. Seven holy stakes. A docked ship. A portal to another world. A thin rope tied to a thick rope. A torn harness. Parab parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, forty gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second time, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears in a human eye and open human eyes in all directions, breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, Breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Ha ha ha. It doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Uh, that is, uh, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home with for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay! What did I just... Uh, can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Okay, that was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. Monica. Yeah, you missed the raccoon, Marty. Artie, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. Which thing? There were a lot. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. 
It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. How do you know this? And why are you telling me this? And why are you so nonchalant about it? Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be, like, a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault, though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So, if you've... I think you should keep your distance, and that would probably be the best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Again, that lemmings level. The colors, they won't bright, beautiful colors. Fresh and expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. And then just cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Running, grating, ribbons, so green, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a short word on a return tip. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to... Um... Ugh, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult situation. And when that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when... Um... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. No, oh, I wanted to save right before this. I think if you save before you get the special poem, you can get more than one. All right. What is it? Nothing is real? Also, if you save this image and brighten it, you can see what's written in these black boxes, and it is messed up. Oh, Lord, we get this Easter egg. Oh, this Easter egg is disturbing. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Uh, well, sort of. Oh, oh, it gets worse, Marty. You want... <laughs> Playing, playing on Halloween makes the more likely to appear. That I would not be surprised about that. So, um... This is a weird Easter egg. A lot of people don't really know what this is supposed to be. There are a bunch of different theories. The theory, that, the theory that to me is the most disturbing and also makes the most sense is that this is right now basically Sayori's perspective as she was hanging herself. It's... it's... yeah. Sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. <laughs> don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more... Lively ever since Artie joined, and we've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members just means everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know, I, I know you feel that way, too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard to put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Artie? Ah, uh, 
whatever you say, Moneka. Oh, come on! You can't take advantage of Artie to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Artie joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Artie isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're the only one here who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you really should consider our opinions for once. Monica's clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Artie want to get more members too, right? Not really. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation... Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Artie, why did you even join this club? I was forced to. Literally. What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Artie. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... At least for a little bit of time, things were nice. And Suki starts packing up her fans. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? Okay, Yuri, just take it easy. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still... I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. No one would cry if she killed herself. That's way so far over the line, Yuri. Oh, that's also not okay. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Artie? What do you want to get out of this club? Pay attention to her eyes, by the way, folks. Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide to giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing here is that everyone gets along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members you have, but the quality of the members that we have. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Yep, you see that? Bleeding. Still bleeding. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change, too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So, if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri? Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. But Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Artie? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Artie before we leave. <laughs> nope, Nick. Playing DDLC. I don't have Corpse Party. 
just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew! Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Artie, I just wanted to make sure that you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like I'm kind of responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know. I don't like seeing the other girls giving you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit... You know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because all the time that you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean... I guess it's technically only been a couple of days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things that I've been hoping to talk with you about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet! No! Stop it! 